Hey everyone, I'm Mary Mancusi, the author of Dangerous Secrets, the story of Adina and Agnar, which comes out from Disney in November. It's a Frozen 2 prequel, as you know, uh, and it tells the story of Elsa and Anna's parents uh, when they were younger, uh, leading up to the time of their death. And I'm so excited about it, and I really can't wait for you guys to read it. And it's been really fun uh, the last couple weeks being able to talk to you guys finally. I've, I've been writing this book since October of last year, um, before Frozen 2 even came out, and I've had to keep it as a secret basically myself until finally the news was officially released so it's been something that I've been bursting to talk about and still can't really talk about at the same time I know you guys have written in with a ton of questions and I try to answer all I can but of course Disney uh, really wants to keep a lid on the book and I do too I think um, the best way to experience a book of course is to not know too much about it going in uh, you already know a lot of their story but um, hopefully there'll be a lot of surprises for you and revelations and answers to maybe some of the questions um, that you had after watching Frozen 2. So um, I really don't want to give too much of it away, but I am excited to geek out over this with you guys. And I love the Frozen fandom. Um, you guys are so positive and supportive and excited. And um, that just makes me feel really welcomed. So thank you. Thank you for uh, being so receptive to me coming out there and uh, interacting with you guys. And I hope to be able to do that a lot more with teasers and contests and and all that fun stuff. Um, mostly because, and I don't have to do this, um, obviously my job was to write the book and my job is over, but I am such a Frozen fan myself, um, it's fun for me to be able to geek out and talk about this stuff with uh, like-minded people, especially since I had to keep silent for so long. Um, I loved Frozen 1 when it first came out and uh, Frozen 2 just blew my mind away on a whole nother level. I don't think I can watch it uh, without crying even to this day and I've watched it so many times um yeah uh, I've been a Disney girl I guess since um I can remember I mean way way back and um I actually started out almost at the most bottom you could go uh I worked as a cast member uh for the Disney store in Boston when I was in college you know selling stuffed animals and collectibles uh, and all that good stuff and I loved it it was like a dream job to me um, just becoming part of the Disney magic and uh, it was so positive you know everyone you had to smile and be friendly and excited about everything and you got to meet people who love Disney as much as I did and uh, you know share stuff with them so that was sort of my introduction to the company uh, Disney even though I've been a lifelong fan of the movies and you know the theme parks and so when I graduated from college I actually moved down to Orlando so I could be close to Disney World. Uh, I wanted to be there as much as possible. And so even though I didn't get to work there, I was actually working as a uh, TV production assistant um, at the time. But my friends and I had annual passes and we would go down there like as much as possible. Pretty much every weekend you would find us there. And we had no money at all. But you know, because it was an annual pass, it was paid for. So we could run around and go on the rides and just like ride the people move over and over again to get out of the heat or whatever we would do um, we just loved being there and being part of the magic I know it sounds cheesy to say but it really felt that way and it still feels that way to me too I mean I don't live in Orlando anymore I live in Austin Texas but I try to get there back there at least maybe four times a year uh, or one of the other parks Disneyland Disneyland Paris uh, I've been to Tokyo Disney once that was really cool Disney Sea there um, of course now I'm sort of stuck at home like we all are uh, and so I'm not able to go and I miss it so much I actually got to go in January that was the last time I was there and um, it was only for one day because I had been at a writer's conference and I got to sneak out for one day early and go to Disney and I got to ride uh, Rise of the Resistance, the Star Wars ride. And it was just as awesome as you can imagine if you haven't been on it. And I was so thankful that I got to do that uh, before everything shut down. The one regret I have though is we headed over to Epcot because it was like the art, you know, time. I can't remember food and art or whatever it was called. And uh, we walked past Norway and I was like, oh, I should go see Elsa and Anna and get a, see their new outfits, you know, like 
oops, there we go, uh, like Snow Queen uh, uh, Elsa and uh, Queen Anna, and I was like, oh, I want to do that, but there was a line, and I was uh, coming back to Disney in a, in a couple of months anyway, and, you know, we were meeting a friend, and so I was just like, you know what, I'll just do it next time, it's fine, it's fine, uh, and I kind of wanted a copy of my book with me anyway, so I could, like, have Elsa and Anna see uh, their parents' book, uh, and then everything shut down, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still haven't got to see their new outfit, so that is, like, high on the list when everything is open again. And I know Disney is open, but I can't get there at this point uh, safely. So I just, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, something to look forward to. I think it's important to have things to look forward to, obviously. Uh, so yeah, and, and, and so you're probably wondering how I got to write Dangerous Secrets, and it's kind of a crazy story. So I, you know, wrote a regular book, um, it was called The Camelot Code, The Once and Future Geek, and I was looking for a publisher for it. And uh, Disney Press had come out and said they're looking for a different mythology books, and I said, ooh, Camelot Code is based on the King Arthur story, so maybe that would be something they were interested in. And so we sent it to them, and they bought it. And so this is an original work. This is something I came up with myself. It's not a Disney property, but Disney does publish books like that. For example, the Rick Riordan, Percy Jackson stuff, that's all his stuff, and they publish it. So, you know, they do normal publishing as well as stuff as, like, tie-ins, like, a Dangerous Secrets book or Forest of Shadows or whatever, The Twisted Tales. Uh, so I thought that was pretty awesome. Like, I'm a Disney author, I'm a Disney author, except that I wasn't actually, you know, in the sense of writing their stuff, writing canon. I was doing my own stuff, but it was published by Disney. <laughs> and that was a dream come true for me just as it is. And so I did several books with them, a sequel to The Camelot Code. I did a book called Dragon Ops. Um, and so I was just chugging along, doing my own books and writing for Disney and feeling pretty great. Uh, along comes my editor, and she says, this was a year ago almost now, uh, in October of last, of 2019, and she said, would you like to write a Frozen book? I know you love Frozen. Uh, and I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> I really, like, read that email. I'm like, I must be dreaming. I must be not awake. You know, there's no way this is actually happening. And she was serious, and she said it's about... Um, Elsa and Anna's parents. And now at the time, you have to remember, Frozen 2 wasn't out yet. We only had Frozen 1, and that was the only touchstone I had for Elsa and Anna's parents. And I'm like, well, that's not much of a story. They like have only a couple lines and then they die. So are you telling me they're still alive? <laughs> and then I found out that it was a prequel and that it would be about them when they were younger. And once I read the script of Frozen 2, I realized, uh, oh, there's a huge story here. And I was so, so honored to be able to be chosen, to be chosen to, uh, to tell that story. And uh, I worked closely with my editor and the filmmakers and created the story. Um, we started before I even saw the movie. Uh, and then when I saw the movie, I just bawled, you know, <laughs> like the scene, the show yourself when mom's looking down at Elsa. I am just like crying. I had read the script, but the seeing it and hearing it and just being there um, larger than life in the theater, oh my gosh, it was such an emotional experience. And I still cannot get past that part without sobbing like a baby. Um, and um, so I was very, very um, honored. Again, I say, I say that a lot, but it, it's true. I was very privileged to be able to write the story and contribute to the Frozen verse, uh, a world that I just love. And it was almost the easiest book I've ever written because the characters just felt alive to me, you know? Like the world is so rich and there's so much there to work with um, that it was just, it just the words flew off, off out of my brain and onto the paper. And um, I was very lucky to have an amazing editor to work with and the filmmakers and everyone was so encouraging and so open to ideas and, and, and it just was a magical experience again to just use that word. So that's the story, and of course I've had to keep it a secret all this time. I saw that it started to get leaked back in the spring, and I was really excited, but I was like, when are we going to talk about it? And it turned out it wasn't until now, but uh, it's out there now, and in November it'll be really out there, and you'll get to see what I did, and I hope that I did you all proud. Uh, I hope I told a worthy story uh, that will, you know, endure as part of the Frozen verse. But anyway, um, that's... <laughs> That's longer than I thought I was going to talk, but I just wanted to say hi and uh, thank you again for the warm welcome. I'm really privileged to be part of the fandom and, and, and the Frozen verse, and uh, I look forward to chatting with you more and telling you I can't give away any secrets. <laughs> uh, and then we'll look forward to November. All right, bye.